Thanks for the invitation. I'm gonna to talk today about why a mask is if not a mask and some face masks are better than others. Um, to understand this topic, we need to start by understanding how the virus is transmitted. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were told that infected people, when they cough with these knees, they produce projectiles, also called droplets. And these projectiles could hit you inside the eye, inside the nostrils, inside the mouth, and you could get infected that way. Or you could touch an object where one of these droplets had landed, and you could touch again your eyes, your nostrils, and that's how you got infected. This is the droplets and the surfaces. And at the beginning of the pandemic, CDC and WHO and everybody told us that that was how this virus was transmitted. There was a third way that was known to be possible is that in addition to these large projectiles, there is also smaller particles called aerosols that can also contain the virus, but they are too small to behave like a projectile. Instead, they float and then they can be inhaled and inhalation of aerosols, breathing them in, is what we call airborne transmission. At the beginning of the pandemic, we were told in no uncertain terms by WHO that this did not happen and that it was misinformation to say that it happened. Now, the pandemic has really changed things a lot. And this is a paper we published over a, a year and a half ago where we showed that this statement from WHO was completely wrong. There is lots of evidence from many different types of, of, of studies, and they all point to airborne transmission being the only important way in which this virus is transmitted. So basically, we're breathing the virus in. Everything else is very small. Okay? And this paper has had a huge impact, but, but public health agencies are still kind of resisting communicating this clearly you know, for, for other reasons that are not science. Now, when does this happen? It happens primarily in two situations. When we are close to someone, that's where the aerosols are the most concentrated, like if you were talking to a smoker. So this is, in this situation of close proximity or close contact, that's where you're gonna see the most infected people. And this can happen indoors or outdoors. But in addition to this, when you have people sharing a room, just like this person who's at a certain distance will eventually smell the smoke from this smoker, if that was the case, they can also breathe in some of those aerosols at, after they are trapped in the room. And every super spreading event that has been studied in detail is caused by, by this, by sharing the, the room air without being close to someone else. And we know that super spreading event is very important for the pandemic. It's estimated to, to lead to about 50% of, of, of the cases. Now, before we talk about masks, and, and how they work in filtering the virus, we need to dispel two uh, myths about, about how this works. This myth was published no, nowhere else than the Journal of the American Medical Association. So they published this cartoon for a paper. And here you see that the virus is floating in the air in this basically water droplet, the water will evaporate and you have something very, very small. That's basically the size of the virus that's floating in the air. That, is what a lot of people think, and it is completely wrong. What science really tell us is that it's much bigger aerosols. They're still small enough to float and to be inhaled, but they're much bigger than the virus. And most of the aerosol is saliva or respiratory fluid. And then there is a small fraction of aerosols in it. And this is what we have to filter. Um, the next thing is that a lot of people have the idea from the macroscopic world in which we live that what we need is then a sieve, a colander, a strainer. We need some fibers on the filter that are so small that these aerosols get stuck in there, like they would be in a sieve if you were sieving some dirt. That's not how it works. I mean, that may be intuitive, but that's not how it works. We're dealing with microscopic physics that people don't have experience of, and there are really different physical mechanisms that are much more efficient. And, and you don't need the fibers to be so close. They can be much further apart and they still it works very well, okay? so, but this is yet another misconception that, that's floating around. Now, okay, so we know that we're gonna wear a mask and the idea is that it's gonna remove the aerosols that we're exhaling if they have the virus or they were inhaling that may also have the virus. We want these masks that have good filtering efficiency, meaning when the air goes through it, it removes the viruses to be breathable, to not oppose much resistance to the air. Otherwise it can be difficult to wear for a long time and to fit well and not have any gaps. Otherwise, if the air goes through gaps, then it is not filtered. Now, these are the results from a study from the CDC on cough aerosols, and there are many similar studies. Um, 
And here they tested the efficiency. So this is how well the mass works in removing um, aerosols as a function of the size, right? And these are the sizes that are relevant for, for this problem. And you see what we call an N95, which is, uh, is basically something like this. It filters, you know, 95 or 99%. I tested one of these on myself with professional tools and it was 99.9%. .9%. So these definitely work very well. But one detail that's important is a real N95 or FFP2 or three as they call in Europe needs to have the straps behind the back. This is essential for them to fit well, to seal all the gaps and to really have this level of protection. Many people think that this type of mask, what we call a KN95 or KF94, is an N95, is not true. These ones, the material tends to be good quality as well, but because they go through our ears, they don't push as, as strongly against our face and they don't seal as well. A study after a study, they see, you know, in half the people or a third of the people, they don't fit as well. So, I mean, is the next best thing if, if this is intolerable for whatever reason, but it's not as good. Now, the third type of mask that we have is these surgical or procedural masks. And they, they may be good filters, but the problem is a lot of the air goes through the gaps. Okay? And the results here of the efficiency, you know, they depend on particle size, but it's like maybe 40%, 50%, 80%, depending on the size, you know, let's call it 50%. So now 50% protection is nothing to sneeze at. This is good. Right, but but it's nowhere near what can be done with a mask that not much, not much more complicated. Okay. Now we have to remember one thing: fifty percent protection is if you are the only one wearing the mask. But if everybody is wearing a mask, what's called two-way masking, then you get the square of the benefit because let's say only fifty percent of the virus goes out, but then only only fifty percent of that fifty percent is what you're breathing in. So in this, in this study, they, they showed, you know, if everyone is wearing surgical masks, which in this case, they were assuming were a little better, then the risk is only 10% of what it would be if nobody was wearing a mask. But if everybody is wearing well-fitted FFP2 mask or N95, then the risk is 1,000th of, of what it would be with this, with a mask or 100 times less than with surgical masks, okay? So surgical masks, you know, if that's all you have, you should definitely wear it but you can do so much better and it's not difficult. Now I keep talking about fit and what do we mean? Well, we mean that if, again, if you have gaps, the air goes through there and then that air is not filtered. And, and in this video that's on YouTube, you see how the air escapes through the gaps in the surgical mask and that's really defeating the purpose. If you wear an mask that fits better, that's gonna work a lot better. And this is a study where they quantified that this is the relative efficiency as a function of how big were the gaps. And the key thing here is that a tiny gap really does a lot of damage. A gap that's 1% of the size of the mask, so a, mask that's, so a tiny gap here in the nose that you often see 30, 40, 50% of the air is going through there and is not being filtered. So it's really, it's really hurting you. One last misconception is you see these videos in which people are vaping and then they say, you look, the aerosols go through the mask. This is another error. This is really, gases are going through the map through the mask and they are condensing on the other side. And this is what's causing this problem. Um, if you cannot um, afford the 95s or for whatever reason in, in your country, so then there are these braces that can be used with surgical masks and turn them into something close to an N95. What are they doing? They are closing the gaps. It's just a piece of plastic or rubber that is gonna, is gonna put pressure in the places where the mask would naturally have a gap otherwise. And I have many colleagues who have tested this and this works, you know. It's not as good as an N95, but it's almost as good and definitely worth the effort. Um, finally, the, the last type of mask I wanted to talk about are elastomeric masks. And this is basically the same filter that you will have in an N95, but now in a plastic enclosure, and then now the plastic enclosure is reusable and it has some mechanism like this silicon O-ring in this case that does a better job of sealing. So it deals with this issue of fit better than you would in an N95 mask by itself. So for hospitals or for people at high risk, this would be the, the choice of mask, but it costs a little more the initial purchase. So finally, just, you know, so I have summarized what I said, the best is really N95s, next is KN95s, and then it goes down from there. And 
you know, I'm a, I'm a scientist working on aerosols, but here you have an infectious disease doctor from Harvard or the former head of the CDC telling you the same thing. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope this was useful. Okay, stop.